everybody. Aye. Okay. Welcome to the TSO meeting. Of I was that Andy. Um, okay, we are. I'm now going to call to order the TSO committee of the town council, and then we will have our and Lynn will call together the town council members who are here, and then we'll have our public hearing. Okay, so. Um, who is here? Dorothy Pam is here. Um, Anika Lopes. Present. Um, Andy Steinberg. Present. Um, Anna Devlin Gauthier. Present. Okay. And did I forget somebody? And Shalini uh, Balmilne, I believe, is absent. Okay. <laughs> Okay. And so you want to call yours together? Great. So um, let me just say, pursuant to Chapter 20 of um, the Acts of 2021, this meeting is being held via remote means. Uh, we also have a quorum of the council present at this TSL meeting on March 10th. And I'm going to call on those council members uh, that are not on TSO and make sure that they can hear us and we can hear them. Um, Pat DeAngelis. Present. Lynn Griesmer is present. Um, Pam Rooney. Present. Kathy Shane. Here. Jennifer Taub. Present. Did I miss anybody? Speak up now. Okay. We're here and Dorothy, please continue. Well, I thought I'd read you a bit of public hearing, um, an opportunity for residents to address the council on specific issues. Uh, these comments may be presented orally or in writing. Um, let's see. And the town council can in fact choose to hold a public hearing on any topic it chooses. Um, the time allotted to public hearings cannot be more than three hours in any one session unless the council votes to waive this limitation. And then they have to give a date and a time and place certain for continuance should that be required for any uncompleted hearing. Um, okay, so the format for a public hearing is the petitioner's presentation and then questions from counselors, um, public asking a question, public speaking in favor, public speaking in opposition and questions from counselors. And so that is what we are going to do now. Um, and um, I believe that I can say that the public hearing will start now, unless there's something else I'm supposed to do. Shall we open? And shall I invite the presenters to um, state the issue? Okay, and the presenters um, are uh, Sean Mangano and Paul Bachelman and Jennifer LaFountain. Is that correct? Okay. Paul, would you like me to kick yes, us off? Yeah, okay. Sean, and, Sean and Jennifer will be doing the presentation. Yeah, so thank you. Um, so in the last year or so, we've really taken a hard look at parking and the parking recommendations that came out of the, the downtown parking working group. Um, that led us to taking a look at the parking permit system and doing a, a pretty uh, thorough update of it. Um, I think the last time it was updated was in the maybe 2005 was the last time it was, it's been quite a quite a while. So we went through the whole thing and tried to update it to um, to do a few things. One to reflect higher costs of managing the parking system, which I'll, I'll share my screen in a second. Bring up the fees that have been proposed, um, but we also just looked to clean up some of the other language. Um, throughout the parking permit system, uh, make it simpler, easier to administer for Jen's office who deal with people on a daily basis. Um, but the, the major change is to the fees. So is it okay if I share my screen, uh, Dorothy? Yes, okay. absolutely. Uh, I'll make it a little smaller. So uh, the number one area we looked at, or the, or the, the biggest area we looked at were the fees. So previously, um, the fee was $25 per year. 
for both resident permits and employee employer permits. And so those were, uh, we took a look at those. The, the one change we made was to separate um, the resident permit between vehicles registered in Amherst and vehicles not registered in Amherst. Um, and the reason we did that was because we do not get motor vehicle um, excise tax from vehicles that are not registered in Amherst. And that tax is a major revenue source. It's about one and a half million dollars for the town. Um, it helps support the overall operation and specifically helps support um, improvements to roads and parking lots, sidewalks, things like that. Um, and so a large number of our resident permits, when we did a, a sample of them, um, were for vehicles not registered in town. So we thought it, there was some um, logic um, and fairness to charging a higher rate for vehicles not registered here. Um, and that might encourage those vehicles to register here, register in town in the future. Uh, so for the resident permit for vehicles registered in Amherst, we proposed a three-year plan to increase those up to $150. Um, it's roughly a six times, it's six times as much as it is currently. Um, and we did it over three years to try to uh, minimize the impact in any one year to uh, to the resident. And we did that throughout, you'll see that throughout all the fees that we did over three years to try to minimize the impact in any one year. Uh, the second tier is, is for resident permits not registered in Amherst or for vehicles not registered in Amherst. Uh, those we increased at a greater rate and they're more in line with um, like the, the UMass lots, for example, um, and what Northampton charges for their long-term lots. Uh, the third tier is the employer employee permit. And so we, we wanted to increase that just to reflect that the costs are higher and it ha hadn't been increased um, really since the creation of the parking permit system. Um, but we also wanted to recognize that um, some of the people who may buy this, these permits may have um, limited wages and that we, we wanted to keep this affordable for people to work in downtown. Um, so it increased uh, from $25 up to a maximum of 50 um, in three years and 60 if you have two vehicle permit. And then the last tier um, that we increased is the lower level of the Boltwood garage, the reserved spots. So there's 28 of those spots. Um, and one thing I wanted to clarify from a previous, uh, I think response to a question is that there's about 80 spots in the Boltwood garage, um, 79 or 80, of which 28 of those are um, permit spots. And Jen, correct me, feel free to jump in if I misstated that. But um, so we are proposing to increase those reserve spots up to a maximum of 1500. This was increased after discussion with the um, TSO committee. It originally was a lower amount um, in that final year, but we did end up increasing it based on feedback from the committee. And so all of this was done with an eye towards um, making capital improvements to the parking system. We're not just increasing fees for the sake of increasing fees. We're, we're trying to generate additional revenue to um, improve lighting, improve signage, um, start building up a capital reserve to make some improvements to the parking lots in the future. Uh, that's really the major driver of these changes. And I think with that, I'll stop and see if Jen or Paul wanna add anything else. Not seeing any no, additional no, comments. We're, we're, I think we're good. This is a good presentation. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Uh, now, do we have counselor uh, questions? Um, anyone have a question after this presentation? I have one. Andy. Uh, I thought uh, you were going to um, have the finance committee make a brief report at this point. You're correct, Andy. Thank you very much. Yes, because we, we felt that it was important that the, the committee and those attending the hearing hear all of these facets. Yes, so please go forward. Andy. Yeah. I think that the uh, council, uh, including the committee members, but the entire council has the report from the finance committee at the last meeting. So this is really just to let the public know that it was, um, this proposal was referred to two different committees, the other one being the finance committee, in addition to the town services, I happen to be the member who is on both of those committees and um, as well as chair of the finance committee. 
we reported in um, the uh, meeting of March 7 by including uh, the report from the finance committee in the packet for that meeting, and it is added to the packet for tonight's TSO meeting so that anybody from the public who wants to read the um, finance committee report in full, it's in packets of both of the meetings. Um, I'm not going to repeat anything that uh, Sean has already reported, um, though that was uh, a lot of the discussion because we did talk about um, the need for enhancing parking revenues being a significant financial factor. Um, we did note something that wasn't mentioned, and that was that we've um, just been through a long period of time where um, the revenue is uh, substantially decreased for the parking system. And as a result, um, we're actually farther behind than we would have been had there been no uh, business fall off related to the pandemic. But um, it is what it is, and that happened. And as to be noted, the enterprise fund um, is a transportation enterprise fund and it supports the parking system, but it also supports other parts of the transportation system, including part of the uh, cost of running the PVTA system within um, the town and uh, some other expenses that are related to uh, transportation. The um, so we felt that the revenue was a significant issue that should be considered by the committee, uh, this committee and by council. And that was the um, thrust of the finance committee recommendation. There were several issues that were talked about during that time. One was uh, that... Um, it was actually our thought that um, some of these um, charges could be um, these new fees uh, really could be implemented much more quickly than has been proposed in the um, staff proposal um, that we are, as noted, substantially behind other communities in the amount that we charge and in substantial need of the revenue to improve the system and possibly to improve staffing for the system. So that um, we would, um, the finance committee had, did have a discussion and recommendation about looking to accelerate, particularly for the um, resident permits for people who don't register their cars in Amherst and possibly doing it over a course of two years instead of uh, doing it over the course of three years. Uh, we uh, talked about the employee rates um, and uh, uh, very much appreciated that, that, that a lot of the employees who are not provided parking spaces by their employers and therefore need the system um, include people who uh, ec have economic challenges that it's important that we maintain um, the system within a reasonable rate structure. And we think that a reasonable rate structure has been proposed. Uh, we also talked about the resonance for the question of, um, are we being um, particularly sensitive to low-income residents um, in the resident parking permits. And uh, the um, suggestion was made that we at least look into the possibility and um, get staff uh, to comment on whether there's any way to define an appropriate grouping that um, should be considered for special rate structure because of qualification for economic means economic needs, um, we, uh, um, examples that were given were um, elderly living in subsidized housing as an example, 
or anybody living in a sub in some type of subsidized unit, we realize that um, that puts the staff in a position of having to administer such a system, such as why uh, it was our recommendation that um, staff be um, invited to comment on that. The last thing that I'll just report on quickly is that there was some discussion about the underground garage spaces that were referenced earlier. They are an important part of the re revenue for the town because um, it's a significant part of the transportation fund comes from those permits and uh, the uh, um, additional piece that I uh, that, that the committee talked about was that um, because those spaces are um, a lot um, used by um, businesses and they're therefore vacant at night and on, on weekends when there's the highest demand by others for the spaces is a certain amount of frustration that people report from being going looking for parking spaces and seeing these reserved spaces that they can't use in there, but they're available spaces. And whether there was a way to reduce the hours, we recognized that there were complications with that, but um, it was an aspect of it that we noted and uh, thought that there was at least some possibility to consider um, various options, including having some spaces that are um, rented at a slightly lower rate, but um, don't um, but have time limits so that they can be used by members of the public at other times. So that um, summarizes the finance committee discussion and recommendations, which are, as I said, in the report. So uh, thank you, thank you, and back to you, Dorothy. All right, thank you. So uh, I think Kathy had her hand up before Pam Rooney did. Um, so I'll call on Kathy. But you're you're mute. We can't hear you. Thank you. I took it down because I knew Andy was going to give a report. So I'll just he he said most of what we talked about in the finance committee. So I I'll I'll frame it as a question. Um, I see no reason why on the resident permit for people who have not registered their car in Amherst, why we don't immediately go to $400. And um, I don't know what the thinking was because the alternative, the, they're almost by definition short-term residents because they haven't registered their car. Um, and the alternate place they might be able to park if there were a place available is UMass and $400 is where those rates are also. So I, think that one of the goals of this should be we don't we, we don't want to encourage parking on our street if there's another place to park. So we are trying to raise revenue, but we're also trying to free up parking downtown. So that's a question of why not just go immediately up. And then the other question I had was, um, do we ever look at where the permitted parking signs are right now? And are there some locations that would be better to have a meter because they are really prime locations that someone coming downtown and wanting to put a quarter in the meter would park. And uh, a couple of those were identified. So I don't know whether there's a walk around to say there are a few of these that we should convert back to meters to make sure that the space is available if you're coming downtown to buy a book, to go to a movie, to do something that there's not a long-term piece. So I will stop there because Andy Ray's the questions and comments, the other ones we had um, during our finance committee discussion. Okay, so now I think when I see Sean's hand raised, it means that he wants to answer the question that Kathy just gave. Okay, so I'll call on Sean. I was just gonna comment that um, we don't know the behavior of the permit holders if we raise the rates all at once to, uh, to the highest rate. Um, we're not necessarily opposed to it, but I'm saying we don't know the behavior. Um, and right now the, we know that the rate being low encourages them to park at the periphery of downtown and not in the center of downtown where we're trying to make sure there's parking available. Um, 
one behavior if we raise the rates very sharply very suddenly is there could be more people trying to park downtown outside of enforcement hours um we see it in town hall the town hall lot all the time we come here in the morning and there's you know three or four cars there that were there overnight um so all i'm saying is if we increase the rate sharply um all at once we don't know what the resulting behavior will be um it could be fine and they continue to pay the fee or they park in the umass lot um or they could find alternative locations to try to park Okay, um, I'm going to call on Pam Rooney now. I think was this um, the presentation was great. I it it seems like the the topic though is is strictly talking about fees. Are you going to open up the conversation about the the um, the text that you all have worked on as well, or is it primarily fees at this point? Okay, well, this is my feeling, and you can contradict me. Uh, the finance committee meeting did focus on fees, their particular report. So that's why you've been hearing a lot about fees. There, there are other aspects to this permit parking uh, discussion, I believe, which we will get to. Um, so uh, I would say raise your question now about whatever. Okay, so, so if there's a presentation, maybe it's already be, going to be covered, so I don't want to be redundant. Um, just so people listening understand the, the permits that you're talking about are, are just um, on street parking for the most part. Anyone who has a, a home fronting any of the permitted streets and they have a driveway, if they're parking in the driveway, that does you do not need a permit for your own driveway. So I just wanted people listening to understand that. Um, um, when I looked at the list of the um, the permit areas, I I actually didn't find the map to describe which areas were where. So that's my that's my problem. Um, the the Prey Street parking lot showed only 20, 20 spaces, and I know uh, half of the half of the spaces in that lot are metered. And then the twenty the twenty spaces that I think we're talking here are the ones that are already allocated to residents of Kendrick Place. And I think obligated to them, no one else can park in those spaces. So it's not really uh, an open-ended permit for anyone else. That's just sort of a comment. Um, when we talk about signage for any of these areas, um, it seems to me that it would make sense that it that the signs are a little more complicated, but they state that that parking permits are required between September 1 and May 30, 31. Because in fact, we, you know, we don't want to obligate um, parking spaces when many of the temporary residents aren't using them, and that would free them up for the public or for visitors. Um, at some point, and I'm, I'm going to hold this question, but I have I have several questions about visitor passes, and the um, I think there's a lot of wiggle room. If I were if I were a temporary resident and I thought I could get a um, a visitor pass, it'd be a really kind of cool loophole to not have to buy um, a a on street parking pass for everybody in the household. So we'll come, if we could come back to that, that would be good. I'll, I'll stop for now. Thank you. Um, at this point, um, I would I would like to uh, ask Sean if uh, because she made a statement which I guess seemed more like a question to me. Is it in fact true that Prey Street parking lot uh, it, the most of those spaces are already obligated either to residents of Kendrick Place or um, how many of the spaces are if they're metered they're open to the public. Um, so that that's the first. Yeah. I have so here. I would look to Jen. Jen, if you want to weigh in on that one, you've got a better handle on um, those specific spots. So um, the meet the spaces that are labeled for a town center permit down in the Prey Street lot. Anyone that holds a town center parking permit is eligible to park there. I think because there's so many people that hold permits within those East Pleasant Street buildings. I think that's the closest spot for them, so they don't free up easy, probably. But anyone, I, with me having a town center permit, I could go and park down there with my permit and be okay. So they're not dedicated to Kendrick. No, okay. no, not entirely. 
Right. Um, the, I have a question that may relate to this, which is there's a section near the inner Boltwood, which is both metered and permitted. And um, I haven't quite figured out what that means. I, unless it's because if you've got a permit, you can park there anytime you want. If the person with a permit is not parking there, then somebody in the public comes and use parks and uses the meter, then it is not available to the person with a parking permit. Is that what the, the, that is supposed to mean? Or is the, or is the meter only for after uh, five o'clock or in the evening? So that's a section of Spring Street between um, Churchill and Boltwood Avenue that is, has post meters and is also posted as town center parking permit. And so you're correct. If you have a, if you hold a permit, you're eligible to park there. Um, if you come into town and one of those spots is free and you do not have a permit, you would need to pay for parking during the enforcement hours. So the question is, then that seems to be kind of flexible. Um, and I, that came to mind when Pam Rooney was talking about Prey Street Lot. Is that something that could be done there? Or is that really not a good idea? I think that's something maybe we could look into. I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. And um, I see uh, Paul Bachelman's hand raised. So I'm going to call him and then I'll call on you, Jennifer. Okay. Yeah, so that is certainly possible, uh, Dorothy. Um, it, the idea of having dedicated spaces for people with permit parking is to uh, provide a place for them to park in the center of town so that people can are buying the permits and utilizing them. Uh, if they if it doesn't entitle you to a place, it allows you to park someplace. So if we take away parking locations um, that people might not find the permit very useful. So one of the, so you the only other consideration in that is the meters are not free. We have to when we put in a meter, we have to purchase them. Um, or we have to buy a kiosk system for Prey Street. Right. Okay, thank you. And Jennifer. Thank you. Um, so I have a comment and a question. Um, regarding Boltwood, where there's 28 spots that are reserved. Um, so it, I know it would be more, um, you know, work, detailed work for staff, but since it's not, it's a couple of dozen, a little more, a couple of dozen spaces, is there any way of determining if in fact those are only, that those are taken out by drivers who are only here during the academic year and that, you know, they might be reimbursed or have a different, you know, a nine month fee instead of a 12 month fee? Because it seems like if some of those spaces are not being used in the summer months, you know, why not relieve the, those who have purchased the permits from the three months and give them back to short-term parkers. I mean, I don't know, it may be cumbersome, but so that was one question. Now, my other just observation is that um, I've noticed it more this academic year than other years, but um, the parking lot by what was Cousins Market is always full. I'm assuming with residents of One East Pleasant and Kendrick Place primarily when they begin construction on 11 to 13 East Pleasant, and that's the staging area, all those cars, I guess, will be displaced. So that's gonna put more pressure, just as an observation on downtown. I don't know if there's any, um, and again, I don't think they're paying to park there. They're, they just park there. Um, so I don't know what the, uh, the impact will be once the lot is not available because they're doing construction of the new apartment building. So that was, an observation, and then I'm just wondering again about the, the 28 reserve spots at Boltwood. If we have any sense, or could we have insight into how many of them are maybe available and not being used during the summer or weekends? Thank you. Uh, I see Sean. Sean's hand up. Yeah. Um, so on the parking permits, if if those um, vehicle owners are displaced, um, as of right now, we don't. Uh, there's no sign that we have a shortage of parking permit spots. Um, we don't get a lot of complaints that people are unable to find um, spots. So I think that's one thing we will monitor is if we start hearing complaints that the people are unable to find a spot with the permit, 
um, that would be a sign that maybe we're starting to approach our, our limit. Cause we had a previous question about whether we have a limit for permits and we don't have a, a fixed mm -hmm. limit cause we haven't, we haven't experienced that yet. Um, in terms of the garage, I, I think Jen, I mean, there's, there's only 28 of them. So Jen and I might be able to do some, some legwork and reach out to them. I do think that the reason people are willing to pay a premium for those spots is because they have them whenever they want. It's a, you know, they're paying a convenience fee for location and for also flexibility, um, mm -hmm. which is why they're willing to pay so much um, for those for those spots. And so I do worry the more restrictions we put in put on those spots, the you know we sort of decrease their value. Um, and so that that is that has been a staple block of revenue for many years for the the transportation fund. I guess if I could ask, and this is maybe a little self-interested for my district, but I guess one concern I have is when those cars by in Cousins Market are being dis displaced, will they park on the residential streets and the surrounding, you know, kind of on a 24 seven basis? Because there's no parking restrictions on the surrounding streets. Yeah, I, I mean, that's put, something- I had to put that in. That's something we can certainly alert parking enforcement to. Um, when that does happen, we, you know, that, that'll be a, a high priority thing that we can let them, um, we'll make them aware of. Okay, um, I had one question about employer employee cars. Uh, I guess I was surprised when I looked at the today and saw that it was for two cars. Why would you give a cut rate for two cars? And why would an employer employee need two cars? Some people drive multiple vehicles. Um, and so I think it's just to reflect that some people drive multiple vehicles. They may drive a spouse's car or maybe they have two cars. Um, so instead of having them buy two permits, um, for the same person that, that they have that flexibility to buy a little bit, a little bit of a discount. Um, we, have, we have that same issue. So employees of the town also have to do this um, as well. So we, we've heard that concern from employees as well about um, if they had to pay full price for a second permit that there's uh, challenges that go along with that. Okay, so they can't do two cars at the, on the same day then, is that what you're saying? But how would you know that? Uh, I guess Jen, that might be, that, that's a good question. Jen, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I think the two car permit was designed only for the employer employee with the thought that if I have two vehicles, I can only drive one to work at a time where the resident permit, if you were allowed to have two permits, that would mean two cars parked on the street. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. so I guess I was thinking of married couples who work in town, but maybe they maybe there aren't that many. Yeah, there, there may be some- there may be some abuse of it, yeah. um, but I don't think it's widespread. Right, and we have them apply separately also, if we know. Okay, good. So, uh, Kathy. I, I, I had a question actually prompted by a comment you made, Sean, if we raise the rate too high, the cars are gonna show up someplace else. Do, do we have any provisions like behind town hall, no overnight parking? Do, do, do we have... I don't know. I don't know what we do on our streets, um, you know, and I know CBS lot, the free part of CBS, not our lot, but uh, students will, or I shouldn't say just students, but people can just park their car there and leave it there all day long and then come back and get it um, that CBS doesn't police it. So I don't know what our current policy is on just parking your car on the street. That's it. My question. Okay, Paul. Oh, um, Jen, Jen can fix correct this if it's wrong, but a few years ago, we did have no overnight parking on the street and the select board at that point eliminated that and said you could park on the street overnight. And, and that's when we introduced the blue light, uh, snow emergency parking, not just snow, but any kind of emergency parking because it seemed to be onerous on people who, we had a lot of people in town who felt like, why can't I park in front of my house? And so, I think the select board at that point chose to eliminate that option. So you, it, so previously no one was parked on the street overnight, um, but now they can park on the street unless there is a snow emergency. Um, in terms of parking lots, we're fine with them parking in the lots overnight. It, it's we we set enforcement hours just specifically to increase to encourage turnover. Um, so there's not a problem with people parking. We prefer we like them parking in the parking lot. That's good. But they just we just want them to be out whenever the enforcement starts, which is normally 8 a.m. Okay. okay, so just to sum that up, people can park on the streets overnight. 
unless there's a blue light flashing saying snow emergency, all cars off the street so we can do snow clearance. But the last part um, got a little bit um, condensed for me. Parking enforcement is to ensure turnover. But if somebody who's parking overnight is not turning over. So it's a little, if so, somebody comes by and, and sees, puts a ticket down or does marks you in your book, gets you there at certain time, comes back a number of hours later, there's nothing that says they can't do it unless there's a sign, right? Right. So we only, we have certain hours when the, when parking is enforced. Uh, so in some lots are enforced until 8 p.m. Other lots are enforced until 6 p.m. So it just mm -hmm. depends on when the enforcement is. So after that time, you know, it's parking for as long as you want until the enforcement begins again the next day. Okay, got that, got that, yeah. right. And it's to encourage turnover during the business hours. Um, right, right, yeah. right. So when you've complained about the parking behind town hall, that's the problem is some of you want to come to work before 8 a.m. Is that right? Yes. And you can't get in. Okay. Yes, sir. I got that now. All right. So we've had, oh, Lynn, please ask your question. I was going to urge that we move to the hearing part, for hearing from people who right. are in the audience. Right. Well, I was, I, I'm totally in agreement with you. Um, and I was going to then say, do we have any questions from the public? And it's just questions of any kind. And um, Ale um, Athena would have to tell us if we do. I mean, I, I have the list of the panel of the uh, attendees in front of me. I don't see any hands raised. Um, so I will wait a little bit longer to see if I see any hands raised. Um, okay, so then- um, Dorothy, I, you have a hand. Oh, I you see one, hand. right. Okay, uh, Sailor um, Chiquetti. Uh, I'm not sure if that's correct. But um, please, um, I guess, state your address and um, make your uh, ask your question. The hand went down. Athena, is somebody trying to? Okay, the hand went back up again. Okay. Okay, uh, sorry, it didn't work. Um, I wasn't sure what happened. Okay. We hear um, you. That's good. I don't know if. Um, anyone else is here, but there's a large group of us here today as UMass Amherst students trying to talk about an issue that came to UMass that we're trying to get help from the town of Amherst for. Is it to do with the, the parking uh, permit increases or is this in a different topic? Um, this would be the mask topic. The, the mask topic. Okay, I will ask for advice from my um, town that manager. Would be they should do that during general public comment. Okay. okay. And when is general public comment to-, to Later on in the agenda. Okay. After it's, we complete- Right, it's gonna be after we've had, can we move the general public comment uh, to- we, No. We, okay. I don't we mean, really we, need to stick to the hearing. I mean, after the hearing, can we move public com the, this general public comment after the hearing? As chair, you can always rearrange the agenda. Okay, fine. Okay, so um, sorry. So, thank you. I wasn't is, sure what the schedule there was. Yes. Thank you. So we will. We have to complete the hearing, which is on permit parking. All right. And when we have completed that, then we will have general public comment, and then we will go into our discussion and deliberation on the the issue that was before us today. Okay. Um, and is there anyone from the public who wants to make to ask a question? about the permit parking issue that is before us now at this hearing. Okay, then are there any members of the public speaking in favor of the um, suggested changes of a differential uh, rate for cars that are registered in Amherst and those that are not? Um, and for some of the items that you have heard today, anybody with a statement in favor of updating the <clears throat> on-street permit parking regulations. I uh, do not see any hands raised. Um, any public members speaking in opposition to raising the fees for on-street permit parking um, for um, residents of the downtown area and for employees and employers? And I do not see any comments there. 
So um, I then come back to the rest of the hearing, which is, are there any more questions from counselors? And um, I am open to a correction from the um, president of the town council, if there's something else I need to do. Okay, um, yes, Anna. I'm ready to make a motion. Okay. Um, do I take that before I call on Pam Rooney, who also has her hand up? Yes, okay, Anna. Uh, okay, so I move the council adopt the changes to the permit parking regulations as presented in the document titled uh, Permit Package Regs 222-22, clean. Okay, hold, hold on, Anna. The yes. only motion now is to move to close the hearing. Oh, darn it to heck. I moved to close the hearing. I even wrote this down ahead of time, ready to go. I, I actually thought that hearing. was true too. So, okay, I'm feeling good. You're about good, it. you're good. All right, I move okay. to close the hearing, please. So, do I have a second to that motion? Second. Shane seconds. Okay, Shane seconds it. Um, so, I guess we have to discuss the motion on the table before I can call on somebody else. Um, or shall I, I, okay, I can call on Pam Rooney, I guess at this point, since if we're discussing the motion, hand is yes. down. Okay, um, shall I call the question? No, Pam Rooney's hand's still up. This is in reference to the motion before us to close the hearing, is that correct? Or to say it is not time to close the hearing? Happy to have the hearing closed. I can't vote on it because I'm- You're not on the member I'm of TSA, thank you. Very good. All right, so um, I will call the question. All those for closing the hearing. Um, well, I'll call your names. Okay. Yeah, we need a roll call vote. We need a roll call vote. Okay. Let's see if I can. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Okay. Anika Lopes. Yes. Anna Devlin Gautier. Yes. Uh, Dorothy Pam. Yes. Okay. We have then unanimously, and Shalini Balmil is uh, absent. We have now closed the hearing. Have I done so correctly? Yes, great. Okay. Now, before I go to public comment, I will call upon Pam Rooney. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Um, so I had a few other questions about the, the whole package. Um, and I wondered if there had been any discussion about uh, given the fact that we do want to increase the fees um, as part of as part of this overall parking management, was there any discussion about reducing the enforcement hours on the downtown um, meters? Uh, because one of the most annoying things on earth, one of the one of the most annoying, is to go to the movies and you pull up and you realize that. Um, you have to pay for two hours, which is basically the length of the movie, and you thought you're going to go downtown for a good evening. So um, if the hours of, of enforcement for meters was from, say, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., that might be something to consider. Um, I did have some questions about the visitor parking fees, and when I, when I did the, the math, it was a little bit confusing on um, the actual cost for a visitor parking, uh, a visitor pass. Um, in section 4.1, um, it says that uh, employers and, and residents eligible for parking permits may apply for and purchase visitor passes for themselves or for the business um, for a period of 30 of 60 days worth. Um, the, the question, like if I were if I were a savvy um, temporary resident and my household had didn't really want to pay for a parking pass for everybody, if I bought a one of those being a visitor pass and I and I did it for um, five days a week, that would be thirty dollars a semester roughly. And if I did that twice, I could for sixty bucks I could get my academic year covered instead of paying the four hundred the $400 that I think you're asking people to pay otherwise. So I would put my little mind to work and figure out a way to make that, that work. So if you could look at the visitor parking section of this um, a little bit more, section 
4.12 um, second sentence says any eligible employees and residents who apply for and hold a parking permit may obtain free of charge visitor passes bid for a total of 30 days. So there's a discrepancy between the 60 days and the 30 days and and one being free and the other not. So if you could just kindly take a look at that before you actually vote this into effect, that would be probably good. Thank you. Okay, we have talked about this and, and I, I think you have a misunderstanding. So I'm calling upon Sean right now. I was just gonna say, don't give people any ideas, just, you know, given, given out this uh, inside information. Um, so Jen can speak to the visitor pass. Um, we haven't had a huge issue with visitor passes, so I'm quasi serious when I say don't give people any ideas because um, we haven't given out tons of visitor passes. Um, I was more gonna speak to the first part um, around the enforcement hours for meters, which um, is just to say that I don't believe this these permit regulations cover that. That would be a separate, um, that would be outside of this. This, this is just for the actual permits. Um, and Jen, do you wanna to speak to the visitor passes? Yeah. Sure, so any person that holds a permit as an employer or a resident is eligible for a maximum of 60 of those visitor passes with the first 30 being free. Um, they're supposed to be one day passes. So if you have four, let's say we have four people in a household and each person has a permit to park downtown, the total for that household is the 60 permits. So the first 30 being free and then the second 30 are a dollar a piece. Um, we give them out only in increments of five whenever possible. Um, that's just an internal rule that we have. So there's not too many of them out there floating around. Um, and we haven't really seen much abuse on it. Okay, um, thank you. I, it would be a kind of complicated maneuver, it seems to me. Um, uh, Kathy. Um, Pam earlier talked about signage and uh, making it changing the permit sign to talk about it's only from September to May or whatever it was. But I think in your proposal, you were going to turn the permits into annual permits and not have them be for part of the year. And I wasn't sure why. Um, the rationale seemed to be administrative simplicity, but I think the idea that you get a parking permit only for what is an academic year. So to extent we have summer visitors, we have events downtown, um, people don't see a permit sign saying I can't park here. So, so the two seem to go together that if, if we increase the permit to all year round, then Pam's parking sign change doesn't work. If we keep it just September to May, then the permit sign could say, I think it says nine to five and after five, you can park there, whatever, but it would also say, you know, just during these months. So I'm not sure why we would make it a 12 month permit rather than a nine month permit. So it's, it's, a, it's a question and a comment. I think the current policy makes sense to me. Yeah, again, it was for sort of administrative simplicity. I don't think that's, if the, if the recommendation is to not do that, I don't think it's a huge deal for us. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, should I call uh, on Andy or Paul? I'm, I'm sorry, but just to clarify, the, sign do, the signs do say so May to uh, September to May already. They currently so that, do, yeah. 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 yeah okay, so, I just, it, may, it may not, Paul, sometimes almost no one I know even knows that. I know this is one of the parking uh, recommendations. Mm -hmm. Make it clear to people that you can park at the permit thing after a certain hour. I mean, it's, it, yeah. we may just need to make sure people understand that you can park there at eight o'clock at night. You can park there on, in July or August. You mm -hmm. don't have to have a sticker because um, yeah. people kind of pass them by thinking, I can't park there. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. If we ever get a phone app that, that people, maybe not me, but can use, that could be stated. I just learned in this whole process that people are allowed to park there who don't have permits. I didn't, mm -hmm. I'd never read the small okay. print. You know, um, Andy. Um, I was actually going to respond on an issue that was raised, uh, even though it's outside of the pro uh, proposed changes that were made and therefore a subject of today's meeting and hearing. 
and that was about um, the fact that there's a large number of parking areas that are enforced until eight o'clock. Um, and having been a member of the select board that uh, made the decision to do that, I thought it would be helpful to explain why the select board did it at the time that it did. Uh, a lot of people would come in before six o'clock, put a small amount of money just to cover through six o'clock into the meters and then leave their cars there all night long. And there was um, two aspects to that. One is that there was no turnover in space, those spaces. So it was actually clogging spaces, not making spaces available, which got into the question of why we're having the um, enforcement system. Um, if the enforcement system was to make sure that there was a turnover of spaces, um, that, uh, you know, that um, type of parking which was perfectly legal, was making spaces unavailable and made it harder for people to find parking. But there was another factor to it also, and that is a large number of the people who were doing that turned out to be employees at restaurants. And so that they were um, taking up spaces that were really intended in our minds for patrons of restaurants and patrons and people who wanted to go to the cinema or other activities. And um, it was uh, after significant study by uh, the downtown parking working group um, and its recommendations to the select board that um, we as a select board made that decision. And uh, if we're, um, going to reopen it, I think that we really need to get back into the questions as to um, what are the downsides um, as well as what are the upsides, because I think that there certainly is, um, as was indicated, a, a, a problem that people come and uh, then they, uh, the, the amount of time that they want to be there for a movie, it, becomes problematic and mm -hmm. um, we need to understand that. But I just wanted to share that with you. Thank you. Okay. So just adding a comment here, if we did better publication of uh, on-street par parking permits for employees and the rate is gonna be still cheaper, um, then I, that might not be a problem. Many of us have heard complaints from constituents about the eight o'clock um, thing on the meter. They, they want it to be over at six. So yeah, I think that this may be a Dorothy, future agenda item. Dorothy, that was not the experience. That was not the experience that we had because um, the parking permit system was in place already at that time. And employees um, being able to come to work at 5.30, put half an hour's worth and then leave their cars out there um, was, was just a fact of life. And mm -hmm. it could recur um, because the parking permit system was already there. Um, okay, all right. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm now kind of confused because we, we have closed the hearing. We have a lot of things that we need to discuss but I had suggested that we move allowing public comment for, um, I gather there's a large people from UMass who wanted to make a statement or ask a question about masks. Um, um, first, first of all, public comment is not a time to ask questions. It's a time for people to make statements, but we don't comment. Um, if Unless there is any further discussion that you want to have with the full council here, regarding parking, right. then right. I should adjourn the full council uh, meeting and those people who would like to stay should indicate by raising your hand. And at that point, um, Anna can exit you into um, the audience. Athena's probably gonna do that, not me. I but mean, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't you. think, Lynn, I don't think they came here to speak to TSO. I think they came here to speak to the town council. Right, but this, this ends the period 
where we're talking about parking and then TSL returns to its regular agenda. And at that point you can do public meeting, public comment. Okay. Okay, I, I did hear what you say. I think we just talked past each other. I said that when we are a TSO meeting, I don't think that they came to speak to TSO. I think they came to speak to the town because it said joint meeting with town council. The, well, the council wasn't, the council meeting was not published for the purposes of a general meeting. It was published for the purposes of the hearing only. Okay. I personally am interested in what they have to say, but I need to go to the audience as does Jennifer and Pam. Okay. Um, and Kathy. <laughs> right. Okay. I've got other hands that are up now, so I will call them. Um, no, we, it's, no, we, have, we all have our hands up because we would like to go to the audience okay. so that we can still listen to TSO. Are you declaring the, the town council portion of the meeting adjourned, I'm, Lynn? I am. I'm Thank declaring you. the town council portion of the meeting adjourned. So I can't, I, I don't call on the hands because they're not, they're not wanting to be called upon. That's correct. Okay. Athena will just exit us to the audience. Okay. While that's happening, Dorothy, can I just ask, are we done with parking completely for tonight or just no. the joint? No conversation okay no we, we we i think we've got a lot more talking to do and questions to do about parking i just and perhaps i should not have been i was just concerned at the thought of a, a large number of people waiting to discuss something yeah no was, we're, we're fine i just wanted to make sure that we weren't done completely thank no, you no we are not done we're not done there's a, a lot more to go um so um i guess what i'm going to say now is that um let us have a public comment which is uh and in public comments and matters when the jurisdiction, well, public comment is generally on the matters of jurisdiction of the TSO committee, and this is not quite that. So, Paul, I see your hand raised. Yeah, just clarification. Were you going to vote on, I thought Anna was making a motion initially and before we closing did. the public hearing. Oh, we did vote to close the public hearing. And I was I ready. Th to I think Anna's waiting for the deliberation portion. Yeah, right. that's, okay. yeah, okay. so I'll wait for that. All right. Thank you. So I, I do I do feel, um, you know, perhaps I shouldn't have said this um, about public comment, because if I'm really strict about it, it says it's matters within the jurisdiction of the TSO committee. And I don't think masks is an item in the jurisdiction of the TSO committee. So um, if I may, um, we don't normally ask what people are going to talk about when they speak during public comment. They can raise their hands and, and talk about whatever they want to talk about. We don't thank ask you. ahead of time. Very good. Thank you, Athena. And I see Andy has his hand up. No, I just was to say the same thing. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you. That is very helpful. All right. So then I will say we're going to have a public comment period now, and then we will get back to the TSO committee's deliberation on parking when the public comment is over. And um, people who want to make public comment will raise their hand. Dorothy, okay. do you want to give them a time limit? Um, yes. Um, our time limit. We'll have Sean and Jennifer here too for after. Right. Well, they are, and they are here, but we, we we do need them for the parking. So I, I would say um, three minutes max. That would be fine. And um, because there aren't that many people with their hand up, so I think that should be should work out. Um, but there would be a time limit. Thank you, um, Tracy. I see you have your hand up. Am I unmuted now? Yes, we can hear Great. you. Um, okay, so my comment is actually related to parking, but it wasn't about the fees. So I thought I the best place to make it was during the public comment period. I just wanted to reiterate um, some of the feedback that TAC had provided to the TSO at the last meeting um, regarding <clears throat> the parking permit program. And um, one thing in sp specifically that we had been concerned about at TAC is just um, about the parking permit spaces that are currently on North Pleasant Street on the west side of Kendrick Park on the west side of North Pleasant Street. Um, so as I mentioned at the last TSO meeting, 
on December 13th, 2021, the council did vote to approve changes on North Pleasant Street, that section of North Pleasant Street, to remove the on-street parking on the west side of the street and to move it to the east side of the street. Um, at the TAC meeting, and there were a number of course, other changes as well, including making the street a one-way street north of McClellan Street um, going, yeah, going north. So one of the things we heard last week, the TAC met last week, and I had been under the impression that the changes on that section of North Pleasant Street were going to be on the DPW's schedule for this coming construction season. But the DPW director at that time, he told us that given all the other projects that the DPW is working on and also the lack of funding to make construction improvements on that section, um, those were gonna be delayed at least to a future construction season. Um, now the TAC hasn't had time. I mean, this just came up in the meeting. The TAC hasn't discussed it formally since. We will be discussing it at our next TAC meeting. But I just, just wanted to flag that we, I mean, I personally, and I've talked informally to another TAC member, is we still do have concerns about continuing to have parking permits allowed on the west side of that street. But the safety issues that TAC raised about those do continue to exist, including the very poor sight lines as people are leaving those apartment driveways and exiting onto the street. Um, also, when students, most of those apartments are occupied by students, and when the students are in town, those parking permit spaces are in very high demand. You know, they're they're typically they're typically full. You know, during the day. So um, I would ask. I mean, again, the TAC hasn't discussed this formally, but I would hope that even if the larger construction projects on North Pleasant Street are not proceeding at this time that some minor changes on that section of North Pleasant Street might still be able to proceed, including for safety reasons, moving the parking that's on the west side of the street to the east side of the street and also making the street one way. So the original recommendation was to make angled parking on the park side of the street. That wouldn't be feasible until the street is widened, but um, it seems like it would be possible to have, I mean, there are meters on the park side of the street currently on the mm -hmm. on the south end of the street and it seemed like that could be extended it would be more convenient for people who are visiting the park um so and also we weren't really sure that those parking permit spaces need to be continue to be parking permit only um all those apartments along that section do have their own parking in the back they have mm -hmm. quite a bit of parking there's only one residential property that has a very small driveway and perhaps they would still need spaces, but we weren't sure if the other ones would as well. So I just wanted to raise that for the TSO's consideration, but the, the safety concerns that existed when we made our recommendations, they still exist. And right. we're expecting with the great playground there that there is gonna be a lot of demand for the playgrounds. There is gonna be demand for parking in that area. And we'd like to see the street um, have some traffic calming and safety added even before the full project proceeds. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Sailor um, Chiquetti, um, say, state your name uh, and give me your address, please. Hi, my name is Sailor Chiquetti. Um, I am a student at UMass Amherst. Um, I live in Northampton, um, but because UMass Amherst falls within um, the town of Amherst, I feel that um, this is the appropriate um, place to go. Um, so as the town council may be aware, UMass Amherst recently lifted, or super recently lifted its um, mask mandates, um, including imposing restrictions on departments and teachers, banning them from making stricter mask restrictions within classrooms, um, threatening disciplinary action to any teacher, student, or um, any teacher, student, or department or group that tries to um, create a stricter mask policy to protect either faculty or students. Um, I, as well as a, probably a couple other of the Massachusetts students or UMass students here today, are individuals who are whose health are threatened by this new policy. Um, we've. Um, most of us here today are disabled, 
chronically ill, um, immunocompromised, immunodeficient, et cetera. Um, and this policy was made without any um, consideration for our health. Um, as far as I'm aware, the town of Amherst still has a mask mandate in place, meaning that, oh, does it not? Um, because um, we were under the impression that the town of Amherst still had a mask mandate in place. And so we're um, trying to seek help from the town of Amherst to enforce that mandate on UMass to keep um, those of us who are disabled, immunocompromised, chronically ill, et cetera, safe. Okay. Um, so I, I believe the rule is, is that we're not supposed to comment on public comment. However, um, if someone, if the, if the town manager wants to say something, he certainly may. Or yes, I call upon you. It, just as a clarification, that the board, the health department did lift the mask mandate, just so there's full information for everyone. Um, here's a question, though. Um, that was an interesting detail in in um, what the speaker just said. Um, lifting the mask mandate is one thing. Um, I'm sorry, in, Dorothy. This isn't on the agenda. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm afraid we can't All discuss right. it tonight. We can't discuss it. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, now we have a, a lot to talk about in terms of the um, parking um, permit parking proposals. Um, somewhere here, I have the, the program. Right in front of, shall we go through items one by one? For example, I think the first one was to uh, create a, um, let's see, what was it? Um, can I help Dorothy? Yes, the, the next thing on the agenda was post-hearing deliberation and recommendation to the to proposed changes to the parking permit regulations. Right. Um, we already heard the report from the finance committee, so you can move to the discussion and motion and vote. Right, what I'm looking for is the memo that um, we had from um, Sean, Paul and um, Jennifer which had a number of items that were, and I think the first one was created a parking. Um, okay, well, if I can. Sean has a hand up, maybe he can help. Yes, okay, Sean, there, there was, there were, it was in, there's so many items that we've discussed. I just thought it would be good if we went through them in order. Yeah, I was just gonna propose, we've done this in some other committees, the best way to proceed, maybe just to, go page by page, see if there's yes. any questions on each page, address them, and then go to the next page. Because um, there probably are a couple of tweaks we want to make based on the comments. Um, do you want me to put up the track change if version? Could, I, I have it here, but I've got so many papers here, I can't find it right now. Okay, um, uh, I'll try to make it a little bigger. Is that legible? Yes, okay. that is good. Okay. Um, Do you want me to uh, lead the? Yes, please through? do. Okay. Please do. So I guess is there any questions on the first page? So the this first section is sort of just updating the, you know, introducing the parking permits and um, and the sections of the charter that they relate to. We did have a comment on um, the parking area and spe uh, specifically North Pleasant Street. It's saying West Side only. Um, I think that's a a good comment. I think it raises an issue that the committee might want to consider, which is when these changes happen um, throughout the year, things happen. I don't think we want to open up the parking permits every time they happen. And so I don't know if there's any, if there's anything we want to put in here that allows the manager to sort of update this based on what's going on in town. Because um, again, something like that's sort of small, but I don't think we'd want to reopen the whole, all the parking permits to change it from west side to east side. Mm -hmm. Um, so is I, at somewhere in one of these papers, there was a recommendation that the town manager have the authority to make uh, these small changes. Um, is that something that needs to be discussed and voted on? Or does in fact the town manager have that authority already? Um, Sean, Sean, is this sorry. about the is this about the North Pleasant Street between Triangle and Halleck? Yeah, yep. 
So um, Dorothy, if I may. Yeah. On December 13th, the council voted um, to approve changes to that section of North Pleasant Street. And part of that vote was for the town to return to the town council for approval of parking regulation of new spaces, including a public hearing on the mix of metered and permit parking and meter regulation. So um, in my mind, that's not part of these regulation changes. Yeah. They should be coming back to the council. And Paul, maybe you can correct if that's incorrect. No, that's you may go, Dorothy. Yes, and yeah, I, believe, no, that's, I believe it's McClellan. I don't think it's from Halleck. I think it's so, from so the 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 when the council vote in December, we are now ready to bring back some recommendations. I think we're scheduled for April fourth at this point in time, and then depending on what the council wants to do with it, they could have a public hearing and do whatever is necessary to affect the changes that are being recommended by the town. Okay, so um, you're saying that that particular issue. You're going to be making a presentation uh, by yes. April 4th. Okay, great. Okay. We anticipate April 4th at this point, yes. Yeah. Okay, so that would that would answer that. Okay, so I think we could then um, move forward on this one. Any um, questions on the second page? Well, the, the lower level boltwood there was certainly area and discussion on on that um yeah so this was added in um because prior i don't know if it happened um it, for whatever reason the the reserve parking in the garage wasn't really described in the parking and these regulations so this was added just to sort of identify it mm -hmm. as a location for parking permits okay no no numbers being given here no, it doesn't, um, it says designated spaces, but we don't, um, we haven't specified an exact number of spaces. Right, but I, I believe somebody in finance committee, oh, I see your hand up, Anna, had asked whether that number could be reduced and more open to the public. So, uh, but, okay, uh, Anna. Sure, Sean, I apologize. I'm making you go backwards or I'm asking you to go backwards for a second. I wasn't sure if it was on page two or page one. Um, the adjustment to include Page Street and Beston Street, this is me showing my ignorance of not knowing which streets are where, but is that um, from the TAC? Is that included in these edits? I not, see, I thought, yeah, that's no, not this not item yet. right here. That's coming later. That's, oh, sorry. I was looking at the one where it said McClellan, North Pleasant to Beston, and I wasn't sure if that included. That would be, um, that would be yeah. in here, actually, the top of page two. Thank you. Right, because that's I think is, that's for area one and area two. Yeah, it was saying area two. Right. McClellan has town permits, and then it has resident permits at different yep. places of the street. Right. Yep. Okay. But did you want to make a comment on that? Uh, you're saying that I am in the wrong place, so I'll wait till it gets to the place that I'm talking about, I think. Right? Is that what you're saying? Oh, I, th right I, think we're, I think we're there now. It's, right at the, it's on page two right here um, okay. in this section. So yeah. then I is, is that updated to include the recommendation from TAC to add uh, Page Street and- Boston? No, we haven't. We haven't. Um, if the TSO wants to recommend that, we could put it in there, but we haven't added that. Um, I don't, I haven't personally had a chance to speak with the uh, DPW director to see if there were any um, public works or public safety reasons why we wouldn't do it. Um, but I, I think we'd want to get his input. Okay, so this is, uh, Sean, what you're saying is then this is not an issue that we in TSO would vote on, uh, but this is an issue that um, DPW would be consulted on. And if he had no problem, you would do it. Is that correct? Um, right now, I don't think the parking permit regulations give us the flex flexibility in this particular area just to add spaces. Um, if we wanted to add a section that allows a town manager to sort of um, uh, review periodically the spaces. Uh, Sean, well, I think yeah. it was to add streets to the. Um, it was to, to say that a resident of of Page Street or a resident of Beston, if they wanted to, could apply for one of those residential permits but it did not say adding any spaces okay so it was just to to say to allow 
people in those two streets, which it seems odd that they're not included and tax spent a lot of time on this and making this recommendation. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't involve creating a new space, is this something that can be um, voted on or recommended by TSO? Yeah, I, that can be part of your recommendation. Um, okay. I th think the again, the only issue would be is if that if if that expanding the area um, causes spaces not to be available. But we haven't heard that or heard any concern around that. So yeah, okay, all right. Um, Anna, do you have anything more on that? No, I would like to see those two streets. Um, I'd like to see the eligibility expanded to include those two. Uh, but I, I also don't want to do that um, without understanding any possible repercussions. So I think, uh, Sean, if you think it's it's a safe, measured thing to do, um, then I, I would encourage that uh, addition. Okay. Um, I see Paul's hand. So I think the section we're talking about is actually eligibility, like who can buy permits, right, Sean? And I think that's why I'm on the wrong page. That's what I'm concerned. But I think we're right there, though. Um, no, we, we, that is it. It was. It's on eligibility. It's not on making spaces. Uh, it's on who can use the spaces, right? There we go. So. So you you would want to amend three point one to add whatever you want to add at that moment in time. If you want to add other streets to that, on who can get those permits, you should do that at this point. Yeah, it's in section three. Yeah, yeah, three point one. Okay. So you should suggest some words that Sean can print in there. Thanks, Paul. So uh, Sean, are you able to add expanding, or not, not add this, but are you able to include in area two residents uh, and property owners living on Page Street, or I guess residents of Page Street and Beston Street? Yeah. Is it? How do you spell? Is it P A I G E? P A I G E. Okay. Right. And Beston Street. Yep. Okay. And Paul, your hand is still up. Okay. And Sean, there are very few residents on those two streets, but they're very narrow, and mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to cause a problem. Thank yeah, you, and, and we can always, um, between now and when the council actually acts on it, we can confirm that there's no issue, so. That I'm sorry, good. Dorothy, I don't think you can see my hand. Oh, I don't, I'm sorry. That's Thank fine, you. that's fine. I just had a yeah, follow-up. Please, please speak up if, if, if you get ignored like that by me again, because it's the color's not showing up. Okay, great. Thank you, Dorothy. Go ahead, Anika. Um, I Thank you. I just had a follow-up to Anna's question, or actually clarification. Was this the street where there was just like there was a portion of the street that wasn't included for parking was it just maybe half of the street oh, no right. it's okay. there are two very short streets dead ended well page actually curls into cosby they're very short uh and narrow uh and they just weren't included and it and tack did not thought it was odd they weren't included okay um and that they were the residents on that street if they wanted to get a parking permit would have to go to park near Kendrick Park several blocks away. Uh, Paul, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, so I think the key note here is that this is not creating any parking. It's allowing people who live on those streets to park in the existing parking. So right. right now they can't get a, a resident parking permit. This would allow them to obtain that. And that's why adding right now people on Cosby can do it. And this is saying, well, if you live on Page or Best Beston, you can also obtain a permit. It doesn't create any new parking on any of those streets. Right, that's right. So it's that that, that is a very good clarification. So um, do we have to vote on this? I think you'd vote the whole thing at the yeah. end. Um, okay, very good. Okay, great. So we can move forward. Um, and Anika, does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, so moving forward. Um, okay. Dorothy, Andy has a hand. Oh, thank you, Andy. I was reading the text. Sorry, Andy, please speak. Uh, uh, 
just going back up a little bit um, earlier to the mention of the under uh, of the lower level garage, the Boltwood garage. Um, you know, I guess that the finance committee is going to um, revisit and re to confirm the issue. Uh, just recognizing that there was no comments on um, during the public hearing that uh, and the uh, question then comes as to whether there should be anything that uh, TSO wants to add about the uh, lower level garage. Uh, if it still stays in the finance committee report, it'll be before the council in the finance committee report. Uh, but as a TSO member, I just want to make sure that TSO has uh, decided to pass on that issue and not discuss it today. You're talking about in speeding up the increase in fees? or the increase in fees? Uh, well, in this one, it was actually, I think, and you go back up earlier uh, in the mentioned permits in the, uh, on, in the lower level of the garage, whether there should be um, any consideration given to limiting uh, the hours, allowing some or all of the spaces to um, have limited hours to make the spaces available at other times. Um, and I think that what we really had discussed at the Finance Committee in a little more detail is uh, if there was a slightly decreased rate that would be offered for the underground garage for people who are willing to allow their spaces to be used for other purposes. Um, during evening or weekend times. You, you know, Andy, I did not get that from your report, but I think it's a fabulous idea. Um, because when uh, Sean was questioned and, and Paul, I think they both said that one of the reasons people pay that high permit fee is the availability, but you're saying having two class of, of permanent pay permits. And if someone says, I, I, of course, I don't, I don't use it evenings and weekends. But somebody else would say, no, I've got to know I can always park my car there. Um, and that would be a differential rate. So um, that would be something that you're going to discuss in finance and then you're going to bring back to, to, to us or, but I, I don't know. Does anyone on TSO want to comment on that possibility? Um, whether you're for it or want to wait to, for finance uh, lead on that? Um, Anika has a hand up. Okay, Anika, thank you. Uh, well, first, I really appreciated the finance report. Thank you. Um, and uh, especially adding in um, a mechanism or, or if a mechanism could be managed for lower income residents. But in regards to the lower Boltwood, if I'm not mistaken, was it in the report that there could be an option of, of shared space or perhaps you know, providing people with options, but was the concern also that how, how could that be managed or did I misread? I so, think from a staff, per, I think from a staff perspective, there was concern about um, how we would enforce it, I guess would be one piece. Um, you know, we, I don't think we spoke specifically about what the time frame would be in terms of when the, um, Reserves, reserved element would kick in and when the unreserved element would kick in. So I think how we would enforce it is an open question. Um, and then whether it would continue to be the spot, you know, how much we would reduce the, the price for the permit in order to accommodate that too. Um, or would we keep the permit price the same? Okay, Sean, I have a question. I have been thinking of a spot with a number on it and the person always sparked, but are you saying that the, the Boltwood spaces are like the, uh, permit parking uh, up on above ground, which you have a permit and you're, you can park in any one of those 10 or 15 places. Jen, do they have a specific number that is their spot down there? They do, they're assigned a specific spot in the lower level when they have the permit. Because if they have a specific spot, 
um, what would the enforcement problem be? So we would need to know what are the hours that that spot is dedicated to the permit holder and what are the hours that it can be used by anybody else. Um, I guess, I don't know, is it a during the day that we're gonna dedicate it to the permit holder or during the night that we're gonna dedicate it to the permit holder? Um, and then when is parking enforcement on duty? Yeah. Okay, so you see, you still see it as a problem then is what you're saying. I think if this is something um, that's really um, interesting, you know, I, I could see why this would be interesting. We could find a way to explore it and maybe grab a couple spots and pilot something in the next year to yeah. see if there's demand for it. We could offer, um, we could offer a couple of these types of spots um, and see if people buy them. And, and then if it's successful, we could look at expanding it or if it's not successful, we could go back to um, what we have. Okay, well, that's interesting. And I see Jennifer's hand up. I just also wanna put out there that um, the lower level of the parking garage is one of the safe spots for parking for the emergency bands. So if we reduce the hours of the reserve spaces, that could be problematic for any anybody that is coming in for their eight o'clock work day and somebody's still parked there from the night before from the parking ban. I just wanna put that out there. Okay. And Paul, I see your hand. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's important as, as the committee thinks about things is why are we, why do we charge a fee and what is our mission on this? So, so we talked a little bit about influencing behavior, generating revenue, but also ease of administration is really important for the committee to think about. We can slice and dice this a hundred different ways. We're not talking about that big a parking system. The more you, the more iterations you put into it, the more it gets more complicated to the public. And that's one of the criticisms we've received from the public is that parking in downtown, you have different rules at different places and trying to simplify that is one of our missions. And um, I think that these little nuances, it makes it harder for the staff to, to enforce, especially when we get a new parking enforcement officer and you say, well, this person can park here in these hours, but not these hours. I just worry about the complexity of enforcement and then, you know, people manage, managing the front desk and saying, well, what kind of permit you have? No, you've got seven different flavors here. Yeah. It just, yeah. I just worry uh, about the successful administration of, of this kind of recommendation. Well, I, I, I think you're making very good points. I, I think what you're seeing is people were asked, think about parking. And so you're getting all these ideas. And I think you're right that we're getting a little bit too complicated because that is the, the, the I went to all those Nelson Nygaard meetings and it was the complexity of our parking system that was considered to be, he, he didn't see the lack of spaces. He just saw that it wasn't clear. So that perhaps we do need to keep our focus on clarity and simplicity. Um, anyone have a comment on that? Okay, so let's go forward. Okay, now that's been explained. Okay, two vehicle. Yeah, there, so there was a comment that this section wasn't consistent with the section below. Um, and I didn't initially see the inconsistency, but I think we just, if somebody sees it, let me know. And in, in relation to how many visitor passes um, uh, somebody can obtain. I, I did not follow the argument that I didn't see how somebody could get a year, a semester's worth of parking out of these visitor passes. But I think that Jennifer's clarification that it was per household, I think that was an important clarification. So it's not that everybody can do this, it's that a household is entitled to a total number. So um, maybe, well, it does say, okay, it does say household there. Is there anyone? Okay, uh, Andy, do you see some way to clarify this more? Or yeah, I just wonder if what we should be considering here is uh, actually limiting visitor passes to people who already have passes for other uses, and that uh, if they have a visitor who's 
also wants to park in the street uh, because uh, they have no place else to park during the time of their visit, they can apply for visitor spaces, but that it um, not be for anyone who's eligible, but actually anybody who has a, who's purchased a visitor pass. <coughs> um, okay, uh, Anna. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think Andy, I understand theoretically how that makes sense, except that when you look at some of these houses in the driveways, they they may not need one themselves, but they can't fit a visitor, and so that and it, and then they're looking at their visitor having to park very far away. So for me, the eligibility components make sense, um, unless I misunderstood because of how how fast Paul's hand went up. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Paul. No, independent of you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. No, as I was looking at it, I'm trying to figure out what's the problem we're trying to fix. And when we make changes, you know, we have a system that's in, been in operation for many years. And if there, and this is a good opportunity to fix things. And I think what I heard, we heard from Jen LaFountain was that these aren't, be, if, if there was abuse happening, it would be time to fix it. But it doesn't sound like there's abuse happening. Um, mm -hmm. So I guess that's one of my questions. And as we review this, mm -hmm. but I, you know, oh. I, I just, I just want to make a side comment there. We've gotten some really good, valuable information because like the signage for the resident only areas, um, many people didn't realize people could park there. So that's a really strong takeaway for us that the message people get parking by permit only, and that's all they see. They don't see the, the months or the hours. So we should really think about how to make that better. So we're going to let that stay as it is. It seems. He has a hand up. Yeah, I guess I have a question to what was just said is, uh, as I look at it, uh, that was a good explanation of why residents eligible for parking permits should be able to get visitor spaces. What's the theory on employees who are eligible being able to get visitor spaces? Uh, because that that one, I'm not sure I understand <laughs> why we have it at all, or whether it's ever been used. Oh, I see. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's there's that's one one element of it that I would consider, and uh, the other is uh, you know is, uh, uh, so the question was whether somebody could could abuse it. And I was wondering, maybe it's possible that the 60-day limit apply to the household, not just to the individual. And that way, it addresses the, pro the, the fear that was discussed, um, if there's a feeling that we need to do anything at all right now. Right. Now, um, it says eligible for parking permits. It doesn't say they have one. Right. So I see uh, Jennifer and I see Anna, but I'm going to call Jennifer because you maybe have some clarification on this. So I just wanted to reiterate that the 60 visitor passes are per household, not per permit holder. Um, and there is sometimes a need for the downtown businesses. Um, I'll pick on Coon Riddle for an example. Sometimes they have a group of people that are, they have coming to town working with them. So they'll ask for their five town center, the visitor passes that we give out so they can have those colleagues parking as close as possible to work with them for the day. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, Anna. That's what I was gonna say. Great, okay. So we seem to be okay And Anika has this. her hand up. Okay, um, she Anika. Thank you, Paul. My question was, and uh, Dorothy, my question was answered as well. Thank you. Okay, good. So you do see, Paul, that we, even though it is stated clearly, reading these and understanding them is hard. So um, I, I guess you've, you've really worked to make these legally and clear. If there's anything else that can clarify it or maybe stressing something um, so that somebody else reading it would get it, um, would be good because this is complex, but you can move forward, I think, Sean. Yeah, I'm just looking at this one section and whether this was the section that is um, 
contradictory. Um, does that um, is that not consistent oh. with up here where it's, this says thirty days and up there says a maximum of sixty days? Okay. Yeah, but up there it says eligible for, and here it says and who apply and have that permit. Right. And this does say and may purchase additional visitor passes up to the yearly total, which I think maybe it's okay. I'll keep going. Yeah. If anybody sees anything, let me know. Okay, I'm looking at you for your hands, which I haven't done good enough. Okay, if we're going forward then. So just for, to summarize, these changes were mainly for organization and to make it clear um, from what previously existed. Um, is that subletting, subletting information new or has that been there before? Jen? That is something new. Um, we've been seeing over the last few years, um, some people applying for town center permits that are subletting. And one of the requirements we have is to see proof that their name is on the lease. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to um, minimize people adding their friends from college on right. as a, a subletter without any other information from their landlord. Good, thank you. Okay, I'll go on to the next page. Okay, I'll keep going. Okay, now we're getting to the fees and the time stage, which is where we went to discuss. Okay. Um, So Andy, um, Lynn put forward um, two things about the relationship of TSO deliberations and the finance committee. And uh, one was that we make our decisions tonight and then uh, at the finance committee meeting, and she used a phrase that wasn't totally clear, but she said, I guess validate or something. Um, and I didn't, that was, I wasn't sure what she meant by that. Um, or you had suggested that we discuss this, but that we don't make the final decisions on fees until finance committee meet. And, and I, I am, um, have no particular uh, feeling for one way or for the other. So I would really open it to the um, group. Do you want to, um, go ahead with the recommendations from the finance committee to, um, I think we have specific numbers somewhere, um, do this not over three years. Um, there was, we could do it in one year, do it in two years or do it in three years. And the compromise position is to do it in two years. Um, so, okay, Andy, you have the floor. I think the finance committee did have the discussion and was uh, coming to two years as being more logical to move the revenue increases up more quickly, uh, given the fact that we really have not done this in a while and are, we're behind on the rates and uh, we didn't um, see the gain to do it uh, 
and I, the uh, question then comes as to uh, whether you want to just go ahead and have the committee make its recommendation tonight or whether you want to wait to see where the finance committee discussion goes um if i mean the worst that's going to happen if you if we will go ahead and conclude the matter tonight at tso is is that their council will be left with uh two recommendations that could have a variation on this one point okay so I, I leave it to the committee this committee to make that decision because i think that either one of them is a workable um outcome for the council it's a question of what people think it makes more sense okay uh anna i mean i already kind of spoiler alerted myself that i would really like to make a motion on this not me personally but i would really like to wrap this up in tso tonight um mm -hmm. and so I, I i do want to go back to the year structure you know andy i hear what you're saying that finance saw the positives of it and i'm still kind of it, it's not that I don't see the positives of it, but I'm still a little bit at a loss as what we gain by pushing it for two years. Like what is the, and I think Sean, we talked about this a while ago, like way back about kind of what is it that you need right now that two, pushing this to two years would get you versus three years. And then the trade-off of, you know, staff work and, and potentially angry people. And so I think that's, those are the three things I'm trying to balance because it goes into an enterprise fund. And so how is this, what are you going to do with it in two years that's different than what you do with it in three? Um, I'll give you just a real quick example of, by going to the first block resident permit with uh, Amherst vehicle registration. If you um, went $50 the first year and 150 the second or 75 and 150, you're getting a little more revenue earlier. You're getting to the higher rates more quickly and that will give the enterprise fund that has been so been starved by mm -hmm. the pandemic and the loss of parking during the period of the pandemic um, a quicker opportunity to start replenishing its balance than if you um, do it over three years um, what sean pointed out uh, to the finance committee and was saying a little bit tonight was, uh, and I think the committee, this committee before was that doing it in increments um, allows us to test whether there's a huge fall off in the number of stickers uh, or, or uh, permits that are um, sought and um, whether there's a, uh, a risk of actually losing revenue because people find other places to um, go to park and uh, that um, by facing it in more slowly it allows us to see if there's a limit in the fall off and to to test it out um, i don't think that the uh, you know the finance committee talked about that for a while and the conclusion that we had is given what is being charged at umass we didn't think that um, even the highest rate was going to be a, uh, necessarily um, force people onto campus. Plus, um, UMass has a, um, actually capped the number of uh, parking permits it could issue this year, and, and uh, didn't have and was having a space problem itself on parking, which. Uh, um, sort of gave us a feeling that it was not going to have that effect so that um, that's why we ended up um, going ahead and recommending that it just compressing the number of years to get the money into the system more quickly and hey, anika i see your hand and then i'll call you back anna okay that's yours. and now i had trouble unmuting okay so um, I also agree that it would be nice to see more revenue quicker. However, um, I also trust the town staff and I'm not a driver and have uh, more familiarity with how this would roll out. So my question, if I'm not mistaken, did we not hear before that 
if the fees were to roll out as is, as proposed, that would town manager have uh, the ability to make the change in one year um, and that that would be somehow noted or would, if we went ahead with a three-year rollout, would that be set in stone? Um, Paul, you can answer that. I think Sean was going to answer. Oh, okay, I just want to, I want to clarify the question. Um, Anika, are you saying could Paul do the whole increase in the first year? Or are you saying could Paul change the, once we get to the end, can Paul set the next rate? Um, could, could Paul, like, okay. So if we went ahead with this rollout where, you know, and, and I do understand the point of coming into with two increments as well mm -hmm. and knocking out the middle or, but if we went ahead with the with the three phase and let's just say within the first year it's fine and and you know we people are not complaining they're happy with it would paul then be able to say okay we're going to just instead of going from 50 to 100 that we would go to 150. so we do have in this section that annual fees for parking permits can be um set and adjusted by the town manager so um so i I think yes, the answer to your question is he could um, if he wanted to, if there if it looked like there wasn't any impact. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Anna, you had more to say? I just wanted to clarify, I, I understand that doing it in one year or two year would get us more money in our enterprise funds. I, I'm clear on that. What I'm not clear on is is that is that need so pressing that it overwhelms the potential risk of doing this quickly? That's the part that I think is more of a judgment, right? And so that's where I wanna hear from Sean about what would you do with the money in the enterprise funds in, two, okay. in one year or two years right. versus three? Um, what, how would that make a difference to you? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so parking is, parking revenues are down right now and um, that we're seeing them start to creep back up, but when they fully return, I think is, is we can't, uh, you know, precisely project when they're going to get all the way back. Um, so in terms of our long range plan of being able to set aside a certain amount for capital, um, it's probably going to be a couple years before we can do that. And when revenues are all the way back, um, we do have some capital needs in the short term that this would help with. Um, I mentioned, I think a couple of them earlier that uh, we are looking at meter replacements coming up soon. Um, and that's, that's a pretty big capital item. Um, and we are looking at our handhelds that our parking enforcement officers use. Um, and that's 40 or 50 grand to replace those. They're, they're on 3G and 3G is being deactivated. So, <laughs> um, so so it's hard to predict when we'll get to like the model that we're envisioning because of the way the pandemic has impacted parking. Um, so if we wanted to go quicker, um, I think that's fine. Um, I do worry about going quicker for just one group um, and just being really clear why we're going quicker for just that one group if if we're gonna do that instead of just doing you know a two, a two step um, increment for all the groups. Um, I mean, we, we have a differentiation differentiation in price because of the excise tax um, component right. between certain Amherst or not, um, or not registered in Amherst, but I'm not sure why we would single out that one group um, and make their transition shorter and not just do it for all of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, okay, and Andy, go ahead. Yeah, um, Sean, if you recall from the Finance Committee discussion, actually the focus was more on if we were going to just do it for one group that we would do it for the people who do not have Amherst registration and not Amherst, the second group. I just used the example because it was on the top. Of, yeah, no, that's my point. I'm, I, I, I agree with this. I'm just saying, why would we do it just for the second group and not all the groups? Um, I think that the finance committee probably did want to do it for all of the groups, but um, I think that we've... Um, we're most uh, focusing on the second group because we would like to encourage um, people to make that decision to register yeah. their cars in Amherst. And uh, we wanted to provide the incentive to them more quickly. Mm -hmm. The other thing that uh, you could explain a little bit because I think the finance committee is probably ahead on this one is that uh, 
the enterprise funds normally um, pay a portion of their um, revenue to the um, general budget for certain purposes of administering the fund um, itself. And uh, the transportation fund for the past several years has had to suspend those payments and it has a consequence on the general fund budget. And uh, that that's something that we certainly were considering too. Yep. Okay, so um, to sum up, um, Andy's pointing out that there are serious uh, shortfalls in certain fund categories due to COVID and that we do need um, some money. Um, so the compromise position would be to do it in two years and not in three. Um, uh, Anna, your point had really been, let's trust the people that put this together. It seems reasonable. Why not do it in three years? Would you be against doing it in two years? I mean, I'm not the one that's, it's hard for me to say I'm against it, right? Because I'm not the one who has to navigate people um, getting mad, but uh, I would prefer it to be in three as proposed. Um, I'm not gonna tank the whole thing on that though. Okay, so can I do a straw poll or at least ask for comments on this from uh, the other members of the TSO committee who are here? I mean, Anna's saying the proposal is fine on three years. She thinks it will run smoother that way as was suggested by Sean at well, certainly at the previous meeting. Uh, Andy is concerned about shortfalls in the funds and has suggested doing it sooner so we perhaps would use the compromise position of two years. Um, Anika, do you have a position um, three year, two year, one year? What is your thoughts on this? I trust that it is, um, that this was thought out well and um, by people who are on the front lines. Um, and also I, I must say, I do not have the dog in the race in the same way I do not drive it. I walk everywhere, um, but I also, I do see, um, Andy's point. So I would like to, uh, I don't know, not to sound like I, I wouldn't have a position on it, but I'd, I'd have to, if I have to say right now, I would, I would trust um, the proposal as is and hope that, you know, if there is any incentive to move forward um, with maybe, you know, bump this up at, if the year goes well, then I would be fine with that as well, knowing that we need at, uh, to generate as much revenue as possible. So you're saying that the first year, 22-23 fee, that we go ahead with that. And then as the uh, people in town who are administering this and getting feedback, if it seems to be okay at some point, we, we'd give them uh, the authority to go, go straight to the third year or, or I'm not trying to... I think it already says that Paul would have that authority anyway, that he would. So I I think that we'd probably all be on the same page that we want to uh, experience economic recovery as soon as possible. So I trust that if in time uh, mm -hmm. this, is this is rolling out well and it would be appropriate to bump up an increase and that would be for the benefit of, of the town and I would trust that staff would make that decision accordingly. Okay, and um, I'm just looking at the, the biggest change, resident permit for non-Amherst vehicle registration. Uh, there is a big jump from uh, $25 to $150. So that's in the first year. And um, all right, so any, any comments from uh, Sean? You've got your hand up here. Yeah, the only thing I just wanna remind everybody too is um, with, these up, with these updates, um, you know, it's not gonna stop at this upper limit. It, they're gonna be reviewed annually now and they can be up, increased each year more mm -hmm. consistently with how we look at other fees in town. Um, I know everybody wants to sort of make up for the last 20 years and try to get it where it needs to be, but I think um, yeah, yeah. we'll be able to keep these fees more in line with um, what UMass is doing, with what Northampton's doing. We'll, we'll be able to do that on a more regular basis um, with the updates that are here. Okay, so with this um, position, 
Um, Andy, um, your response to the idea that we would go with the first year and then understand that if uh, the, the people who are administering it, the town staff, um, sees it going smoothly, they could then do it in two years rather than three. It, would that be a satisfactory or at least not terrible to the finance committee? I can't speak for the finance committee because we haven't had that discussion. So uh, puts me in a position I can't be in. Right, right. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I would present it, you know, I would explain it happened tonight to the finance committee and um, then it has to make its own decision. And I think that the uh, question that was I raised earlier will it be ultimately up to Anna who's, gonna, who's spoken that she intends to make a motion at the end of discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and that is whether uh, the TSO wants to hear from the finance committee before just wants to let the council deal with inconsistent recommendations from two committees. Should that happen? I'm not guaranteeing it will because that's not a known outcome. Okay. Um, so then I are we at the level of that we're ready for Anna's motion? There's, I think there's one more. Um, there's one more. Okay, let's there's a couple more pages, but they might be quick. But I do think we want to talk about the permit year. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, so it seemed like there was general consensus to leave it um, September through May. Jen, do you have any comments you want to make on that? I know some of this was about ease of administration. Yeah, I don't know if one of the comment, one of the thoughts was because the price was increasing to make it an annual, make it a year round permit as opposed to the nine month. But I think it, I think keeping it nine months has its pros as well, because people yeah. can see the parking areas not filled up as much in the mm -hmm. summer and maybe we'll use it to visit downtown. Um, but either way. Okay, so, yeah. Th thank you. Um, yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of people saying that they wanted to stay it as it is. And I, I for the first time, I understand why you're going to change it, not just ease, but you thought it might soften the pill of the increased fees. But um, I don't think it works that much. If you're if you're not going to be here the full time, then it doesn't do any give you anything anyway. So um, any other thoughts on the year, the topic of uh, keep the time as it has been September through May or make it year round? Anyone else with a thought on that? Okay, so then um, we kind of keep it as it is, uh, I believe. Is that correct? Jen, um, the second piece here, beginning May 1st, is that still okay? I think I have to, I have to fix this piece, but. Um, if we're gonna keep the permit season in September, we don't normally begin selling them until like the second week in August. Okay. So a lot of the leases won't start until September 1st anyway, depending on. Do we just want to go back to at any time throughout the year or do we want to specify a time frame? I mean, we, we really sell them. The only months we don't really sell them is May, June and July. So I don't know. May, June, and July is when you don't sell them. But right. Why do you make this August one? Um, May 31st. Mm -hmm. Right. So this would mean you just can't buy them in June and July. Is that okay? Yes. So these are just swapping out select board for town manager. Gets rid of a section that no longer exists 
and no longer is relevant. This clarifies that towing is at the owner's expense. Um, and we just got rid of the, the title parking enforcement supervisor. Um, could, I, could I ask a question? Um, how often do you put one of those uh, wheel restraint devices on? How often do, do, does the town tow a car? Just kind of general number. So the, the wheel restraint devices or the boot is the other name for it. Um, any vehicle that has five tickets that are older than 21 days are subject to having that device placed on their vehicle. Um, whether it's a mass plate or an out-of-state plate. Um, it, it really depends on the time of the year. Um, we've had a handful in the last month, but mm. it, it really just depends of timing and when parking enforcement finds the cars. Mm -hmm. okay, so you do do it. Okay, because I, do. I don't see them. I haven't really walked by a car and seen them. I, so I was yeah. wondering if you ever did it. We stopped for a little while during the pandemic and then started back up um, a little while ago. You won't miss often, one, they're bright orange. <laughs> how often do you tow a car? Um, they will tow for anybody that's parked where they're not supposed to be during the parking ban. Um, and if the vehicle, if they don't pay their boot fee within 24 hours, they are subject to be towed at that point at their expense. Uh -huh. Okay. Anna has her hand up. Oh, Anna. Hey. I'm just going to ask if we think we're ready for a motion because I think 13 is the last one. I didn't remember there being any substantial, oh, big substantial changes. Sean. <laughs> We're tired. Okay. Yeah. No. Um, um, I think that again, this is we don't have a the uh, parking commission per se, or at least it's not operational. Right. So I would happily make a motion if right. folks think that that's okay for I tonight. Um, yes. Uh, I got I had it written so nicely when it was the wrong time to say it. So hang on one second. Okay. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Don't tell me, Athena, I have it. Okay. Um, I move to recommend the council adopt the changes to the permit parking regulations as presented and amended in the document titled, I lost your document, Sean. It was called Par Permit Parking Regs 222, 22 Clean. Oops. Sorry. Okay. Is that a second, Anika? Yes, second. Okay. All right. So I call the question. Um, and uh, Andy. I'm going to abstain because I'm in a very awkward position caught between two committees. Yeah. yeah. All right, Andy. Okay. Anika. Yes. Anna. Yes. Dorothy, uh, yes. Okay, so um, it has passed with three yeses, one abstention and one absence. Okay, um, so it's five after nine and um, we have some other business we have to do. We have some appointments. Um, we can thank Sean and Jennifer, yeah. right? They oh, can go home. So thank you all for working Thank through you. that with us. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you very Have much. And, and I got to say, you both were wonderfully helpful. Really, yeah. really good. I really appreciated it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have um, an appointment for the Affordable Housing Trust, two appointments for the Affordable Housing Trust. Aye, aye, aye. Um, Want me to run through these, Dorothy? Excuse me? Do you want me to run through the appointments? Oh, I would, I would love that. I okay, would love that. let's do it. We've got yes. two typical committees and we have a brand new committee, which is kind of exciting. So the first is the Affordable Housing Trust. Um, we have two vacancies and I have appointed Risha Hess and Ashley Jensen. Um, 
both new appointments. And I want to note that the trust requires the appointees to be for two years. The vacancies we have expire on June 30th. So these are just to June 30th, but I will automatically put them back to the council for a two year renewal uh, when we do all of our renewals in, in June, probably May or June. So both very, um, you know, uh, Ms. Hess recently moved back to Amherst. Um, and has some personal experience with a friend of hers who has been unhoused and has very passionate and also had experience trying to find a, uh, affordable housing for herself in this community, uh, has a, a child at Crocker Farm, so uh, really invested in, and brings a new perspective to the committee. And Ashley Jensen is a social worker who's been working through um, uh, the pandemic to helping people and has by through her own personal experience in seeking support for affordable housing has learned a lot about how to navigate through the system. So both really practical uh, advisors to the, to the trust. Okay, thank you. Um, I will entertain a motion, uh, Anna. I move to recommend the town council approve the town manager appointment of Risha Hess and Ashley Jensen to the affordable Amherst Affordable Housing Trust effective immediately for a term to expire June 30th, 2022. Okay, and do we have a second? Second. And Anisha, Anika seconds it. Okay, I call the question. Um, Anna. Yes. Andy. I think that's a yes. I didn't quite hear it. Andy's. Oh yeah, he, so you're muted. Okay. All right. Do I do I read his facial expression or wait till I hear his voice? He nodded his head. Yes. And Anika. I did say yes. I did. Do you not hear me? We didn't hear you. We saw it, but we didn't hear it. Uh, now I'm talking about. <clears throat> now we hear you. Okay. Anika. Yes. Yes. And Dorothy. Yes. Okay. So, um, so the next one is Council on Aging, and we have, again, two appointments, um, Terry Carr and Dennis Vandal. Uh, Ms. Carr has been is an experienced secretary, and for, she has been volunteering her time to be the secretary to the council and has, attending, has been attending all the meetings and decided that she was interested in actually serving as a member of the council. It seemed only right that she take on a, a voting member seat. And Dennis Vandal has been volunteering and working um, as a, he's a photojournalist who's been a photographer and again, um, has been supporting the uh, senior center, but also he, he, you may know him because he took your photographs uh, at the inauguration. So um, both are interested in serving on the council. We may have more vacancies coming up, but these are two strong candidates. Okay. Um, do I have a motion? Uh, can okay. I ask a question first? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Athena, this is a question for you. Can I make a motion for both and say the different dates and then add respectively at the end so that it differentiates them? That's perfect. Thank you. Yes. I wrote this down, y'all. I'm not messing these up again. <laughs> um, watch me mess it up immediately. All right. So uh, I move to recommend the town council approve the town manager appointments of Terry Carr. And I lost the other name, Dennis. What was the last name? Vandal. Vandal. Van Vandley. Uh, Vandal. 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 Thank you. To Randall. Vandal. To the Council v on Aging. V-A-N. Thank you. Got it. Uh, to the Council on Aging, effective immediately for terms to expire June 30th, 2024 and June 30th, 2022, respectively. Okay. And a second to that motion? Second. I second Andy Steinberg. Okay. I call the question. And uh, Dorothy Pam, yes. Um, Anna Devlin Gautier? Yes. Andrew Steinberg? Yes. Anika Lopes? Yes. Okay, that has passed. Thank you. And our last group of nominations. Yeah, our third committee is the brand new Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. Um, this one was handled a little bit, little bit differently. As in the past, I've asked um, Barbara Love, Keisha Dennis, who's on the Residence Advisory Committee, and Sid Ferreira to conduct the interviews. They have been doing such a fabulous job. Um, very organized and um, bring a, a excellent perspective uh, to what the town needs on these important new committees. So there, the committee charge calls for two members to be formerly, having been formerly on the um, community safety working group. And those two members are Deborah Ferrara and Pat Anabaku. 
Um, and so we did not interview those. Those are the only two applicants from the CSWG. So those were just moving forward. Uh, the candidate of the candidates that they did interview, uh, they recommended, and I appointed Philip Avila, Allegra Clark, Frika Freke Ete, and Demetrius Shabazz um, for various uh, um, terms because the requirement for the new committee and recommendation when the committee was recommended by CSWG was that the initial appointments be staggered. So we get into a three-year rhythm right up front. So some will be one, some will be two, some will be three. Um, so the uh, so I think that this brings a new perspective to, um, they tried to balance the committee. Um, one of the things they did not find in the balance was a younger person and they said, let's hold that seat. And we did this for the community safety working group also. You know, they said we would really want a younger person to serve on the committee and there was no, there were no applicants that fit that bill. So they suggested that we hold that seat and they said, we will continue to recruit and find someone who can fill that seat. So, I mean, we'll be out there looking for folks if, if you have any ideas, um, but we, this will let this committee get started. Um, could we entertain a motion and just to um, approve the candidates and terms as presented by the town manager? Sure. If I'm not, I recommend. Yeah. Uh, you know, well, I didn't catch that. Okay, so Anna, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I move to recommend the town council approve the town manager appointments. Um, I'm happy to go through it just because I, I wrote okay. it out uh, of the following individuals to the community safety and social justice committee effective immediately and for terms that I will just say right now. Uh, Deb Ferrara, Deborah Ferrara for a term ending June 30th, 2024. Pat Ananabaku, term ending June 30th, 2023. Philip Avila, term ending June 30th, 2025. Allegra Clark, term ending June 30th, 2023. Fricka Ete, uh, term ending June 30th, 2024, and Demetria Shabazz, uh, term ending June 30th, 2025. And that is so complex. Is that correct, Athena? I'm not looking at the appointment memo. Okay. Right now. I, was right. reading minutes. I was reading it off the letter. Uh, great. So we will assume that that is correct. And we need a second for that motion. Second. Second. Thank you. I call the question. Okay. Anika Lopes. Yes. Andrew Steinberg. Yes. Uh, Anna Devlin Gautier. Yes. Dorothy Pam. Yes. And Shalini Balmilne is absent. Okay. So we have unanimous of those present uh, have voted yes. Okay. So we have uh, inaugurating a new committee, which is a great moment. Um, we then have, after this, we have approval of the minutes um, and um, We've all had a chance to look them over, I think. Are there any questions or comments about the minutes? No. Okay, so do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I move to approve the minutes as presented. Okay. Second. Thank you. And I will call Anna Devlin Gautier. Yes. Dorothy Pam, yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. And Anika Lopes. Yes. Okay, the minutes have been approved. Okay, so um, we're, it's getting late, but um, there was, we've had public comment um, and announcements. Do we have any announcements? Okay, and next agenda preview. Um, so <clears throat> I believe <clears throat> we can, can do the, the can, finish up the discussion of how to follow up with what was voted by the town council on North Pleasant Street and, and parking. I believe we can do that next meeting. Is that correct? Um, and uh, Yeah, I think that we were going to present that to the council and then it would get referred, but I can check with oh, okay. Lynn on how that, would, how that was gonna work. Okay. All right, so it's just, in other words, it's in the future. That's, that's yep. you guys will present it when it's ready. Um, okay, and Andy has uh, going to make a write a memo, I believe, on lunch carts. Um, is that still correct, Andy? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and um, we know that water regulations is coming. Um, I'm trying to figure out what 
somewhere I had written down the date of our next meeting, but it's, oh, March 24th is our next meeting. Yep. So, so water regulations you have, um, sewer regulations are gonna be presented to the council on the 21st, and then that will get referred, most likely get referred to you as well. So you might, you could do them both at the same time to make it more efficient. Okay, so um, let's see. Oh yes, we had a memo from CRC um, wondering if we wanted to, to discuss our committee charge and um, to add um, economic development and um, there was something else, I don't remember what it is. So I guess the North Pleasant Street thing. So that's something we can talk about and see if we will discuss whether we even want to discuss it, okay? Um, is there something, some other item that somebody wants to bring up uh, as a future agenda item? Yeah. Yes. We might also be seeing the rental permit fees, right? Depending on if that gets referred to us or not. Do we know if it's going to be referred to us? We don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing it will be. Um, and yeah. I can't remember, Paul. I think that's on the agenda for the 21st, but I can't quite remember. Sorry. You're muted, but I'm guessing you might also be having 9 p.m. Yeah. Break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to run together a little bit. Yeah. It's coming up soon. It's a future yeah. agenda item. I don't know when it gets here, what it gets here. I'm still just going to be an agenda <laughs> item. So thank you very much. I'm yeah. <laughs> um, and um, I know that we've got a lot of other things that, to talk about. Um, I know that, that um, Anika has oh, yeah. asked for um, some discussion about uh, outreach. Um, I don't know when we're going to get a chance to do that, but um, that's definitely on our agenda. Okay. All right, Dorothy, I'm now, I'm now, uh, it was referred. We did refer it. So um, that we need to put the rental red registration fees on our agenda. Okay, great. Okay. There was also a referral for outdoor public spaces for yeah. summer joining. Right. Oh, that was the other thing. The, from RCC. CRC, RCC. did we want to vote on closing North Pleasant Street on weekends in the summer? That was the memo. Certainly, that's something that I think we need. We, we would need to discuss. Um, so typically, um, Dorothy and Lynn and Athena and I get together to set the agenda for the TSO committee. So if anybody has other things, they other than that's what, what's already been referred, you think that you and and I got um, Anika's outreach piece. If there's anything else that we need to put in, uh, please let us know. Okay. Is there anything that anyone wants to bring up? before we um, uh, close the meeting. Yeah, I guess there's one thing, I'll just go ahead and do it because it's really quick. And the question of uh, closing North Pleasant Street, uh, I think that we really, if we are going to take that issue up, it's not simple and it needs a lot of input because we really need to hear from the bid in the chamber about their views. I think we need to hear from uh, fire and um, police departments. The fire department has a facility on that street and uh, uh, we're here. we need to hear from BPW. So I'm, mm -hmm. um, I think if we're going to take it up, it's not a simple matter and it is going to require um, some help to hear from who we need to hear from. Right, I agree with you um, on that. Um, when you're reading through that, that that prompted some other topic I knew that we were supposed to discuss. I'm trying to think of what it is. Um, so, totally gone, totally gone. Um, okay, so Paul, in such a case, you know, we're not starting, this was referred to us we have to take up something that's referred to us to, to think about. Um, Andy has pointed out why there's a lot of people involved in even discussing this. Um, what would be the best way to proceed on such an item? So I think this is something we should talk about at agenda setting, but probably the first thing you wanna do is just have a discussion with the committee, whether you wanna 
if you want to have a fuller discussion and then we would bring in all the everybody but i think you have to understand the proposal first and so well let's talk about it at agenda setting okay fine we'll do that very good okay is there anything else that somebody wants to anyone wants to bring up at this time um okay uh, I, I know there's some other items we're supposed to, oh, and we're supposed to hear about, about streets and paving. We're, that presentation is supposed to come at some point. Mm -hmm. but we'll talk about that in agenda setting. Okay, great. So I can say um, the meeting is adjourned. Can I do that? Yes. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Everybody, okay. have a good night. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs>